Welcome to Each Backyard, my YouTube channel where I tell you about all kinds of things I'm into, edible and tropical. Today we're going to hit a subject which I really enjoy. It is using tropical foliage to create a beautiful backyard. And today I'm at a spot that I enjoy, drive by often, which I thought I would share with you. So what we have here are some very common crotons. The Hawaiian tea plant, as you can see, that pinkish, reddish color, perhaps. By the way, this phone is a obsolete phone, so we're just going to bear with it for this podcast, but I am getting a new one. So yeah, the croton with the backdrop of the Hawaiian T, that's spelled T-I. By the way, I'm going to provide links to all the things I show in this video. You can get them very easily off of Amazon, and uh, I'll provide affiliate links to get there. So another Mamie croton, this is what I would consider to be perhaps the most common variety of croton. And when you look at a croton, you see something that is quite unbelievable, just in any way that you look at it. Um, they have this tendency to corkscrew curl in the leaves which is wild. They have all different kinds of colors. And I'm going to point out something about these crotons here in a minute that I hope you will find interesting. And then you have a green, what I would just call filler shrub. I actually don't know what this is exactly, but you could have um, you know, any manner of green shrub back here. It's, I would probably choose a dwarf green chefalera as my choice just because they grow so well in my area. But I like that little small ovate leaf that they had there. All right, so this type of croton, I'll put a link in the description to it. Uh, it is very common, and it's a large leaf croton. But what I want to tell you about these crotons is that depending, the, the leaf color really depends and really varies. And here's something that affects it, direct sunlight. So these crotons can generally most of them, certainly the ones I'm showing here, can grow in in very shady areas. In fact, I think they do best in shady areas. And when you get them in these outdoor sunny areas, what I've found is that they tend to bleach out like this. They tend to get a more orangish color and uh, don't show really the true beauty, in my opinion, of the plant, which is when you get into this kind of, kind of thing. Uh, this one is old enough, though, that it is producing actually little seeds. I don't know if you can see that, but just little croton seeds. And that's that's an interesting art, is to grow crotons from seeds. I've achieved that this year on my What You Got Grown On series. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. I've got a few crotons I grew from seeds this year. Not these varieties, but others. Um, and you can see the full sun, has, I believe, has done this to these crotons all around, kind of bleached it out. A bit too much sun for this, but still hardy enough to survive and do it. It just looks bleached out, in my opinion. Now these Hawaiian tea also look a little sun bleached, and they're another plant which loves the shade. So this kind of uh, you know intense sunlight is not necessarily appreciated. On this one as well, you can see it's getting the flower. You know, almost time for it to produce a few seeds. That's interesting if you can get them that large. These grow very easy from cuttings. Uh, however, in my area, you can see this is the windward side of it. The, the wind and the cold really is just a bit too much. These are very cold sensitive plants and uh, they will get zapped. They also don't like the wind too much and they sure don't like the salty irrigation. And you can see this one's starting to suffer some spottiness on it. it you know, they're beautiful, but they just always, in my area, coastally tend to look a little ratty if you don't plant them in the exact right place. Now this plant, in a place that doesn't ever get salt spray on it, is kind of protected from the wind and the cold, and you keep it open. It can look really, really good, but it's just thrown into the yard, probably your odds of it doing well are iffy. But the way they place these plants here is, is quite beautiful. Certainly they've got this like rose quartz stone under it, which is a good way to to go, perhaps in the yard, <laughs> in the bed. Uh, yeah, so 
this type of croton, the Mamie croton, is one I am very, very familiar with, and it grows so well from a cutting. So well. I've got a bunch of these. I've grown them in the What You Got Growing On series this year. They just produce beautifully. Um, my only uh, issue with this croton is just that it's so incredibly common. Um, this one a little less common, but you can typically get both of these at a you know a Lowe's or a Walmart or whatever in my area. But you can also get them off Amazon. And like I said, I'll include some links so you can check that out. Ooh, what a treat! Look at this. The Hawaiian tea plant has seeds on it. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. They are, they are easy to grow from cuttings from seeds. Same thing with the croton. It's just that it's, you know, I find kind of rare to find them with the seeds on them. Now I'm getting ready to replace two kind of ugly shrubs that I have in the front of my house with a couple of these beautiful crotons that I just recently purchased and I'll be making videos on that. So please subscribe to the channel. Turn on all notifications, that way you're notified as I stream and as I release new videos. So videos coming out all the time. I'm expanding my fruit food forest in my backyard. I've got a little quarter acre lot in central Florida and it is has been set up to produce fruit year round and now I'm going to continue to diversify it and add new things to it. I've diversified out into uh, Jamaican sorrel this year which is a type of very delicious edible hibiscus that tastes like cranberry. I've also added pigeon peas which are a high protein source of vitamins that you can grow in your yard. Very hearty, annual perennial type thing and many more. I just actually purchased a grape fruit tree which is quite interesting in my perspective because I haven't had one of those in quite some time. I'm going to plant that. So grapefruits are coming and I can't wait to share the two types of crotons that I recently purchased. Um, one of them was this type here and then the other one is a, what I would call banana croton. Uh, there's lots of variants of that and uh, super beautiful. So. Thanks for watching. Eat Your Backyard. I appreciate it. Please let me know what you do for tropical foliage shrubs, crotons, tea plants, etc. in your yard to create that tropical look. I appreciate you taking the time to check this out. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it at all. Thank you.